Today we're going to be talking about angles. Let's say that you are standing in front of a door. The door has a round doorknob. In order to open the door, you have to rotate the doorknob, but have you ever given thought to how much you have to rotate it? Usually doorknobs don't take a full rotation in order to open the door, but how much do they take? Well, it probably depends on each unique door. The mathematical concept of angles can help us think about how much rotation we might need and how we measure the amount of rotation. Before we start talking about angles, let's go ahead and talk about some definitions. So a ray is a point on a line together with all points of the line on one side of that point. So what that ends up looking like is here's a point and then align together with all the other points to one side of that. So maybe it looks something like this. And generally, we'll identify two points on a ray. So I'll, I'll label these points A and B. And sometimes if you're like taking a geometry class, you'll see this called ray AB with a little arrow pointing to the right above AB. Now, an angle is the union of two rays with a common endpoint called the vertex. So I'm going to draw one ray, and this point I'll call C, this point I will call A, and the two rays need to share that same endpoint A, which again is called the vertex. And I'll label this point B. And sometimes you'll see this labeled with, it kind of looks like an open triangle or a triangle that's missing its third leg. And then we'll call it CAB, so angle CAB. Now, another thing to note is that when we're talking about angles, we want to identify an initial side and a terminal side since we want to think about angles in terms of rotation. And so, you know, intuitively, the initial side is the one that you start off with, and then the terminal side is the one that you end with. So in this diagram, I will call this the initial side and the terminal side here. And then oftentimes in trigonometry, since we're going in this direction, which is the counterclockwise direction, so we're going that way, we will label an angle using a Greek letter. And so here I'm going to have like an oval shape with a slash through the middle. That is the Greek letter, letter theta. And theta is very commonly used for labeling angles. So the next definition says the measure of an angle and the blank that we want to fill in here, we can call it, there's a lot of different angles that you'll see, theta or another Greek letter that you'll see used. It looks like a little fish. This is called alpha. And sometimes another one is, it looks like a bee with a tail. This is called beta, which is another Greek letter, but I'll use theta for this definition. So the measure of an angle theta indicates the amount of rotation to the terminal side from the initial side. A circle is divided into 360 equal arcs, and each arc is one degree, written using this notation. So the degree is a little circle in the superscript, like that. An angle is in standard position if its vertex is located at the origin. And if you don't remember, the origin is right here at the point 0, 0. And its initial side extends along the positive x-axis, which is what is happening right there. If the angle is measured in a counterclockwise direction from the initial side to the terminal side, the angle is said to be a positive angle, 
if the angle is measured in a clockwise direction, the angle is said to be a negative angle. So here, because we are traveling in a counterclockwise direction, if I labeled this maybe alpha, we would say that alpha is a positive angle. And here to the right, we just have some more examples of other special types of angles. So an acute angle is when the angle is between 0 and 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is when the angle, I'll call it theta, is greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. A right angle is an angle that is exactly 90 degrees. A straight angle is one that is exactly 180 degrees. And then a quadrantal angle is one where the terminal side is on one of either the x or the y axis. So there are multiple examples. Zero degrees is a quadrantal angle. 90 degrees is a quadrantal angle, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. So these are all examples of quadrantal angles because they have their terminal side on either the x or y axis. One more quick thing to note is that when we're looking at the xy plane, the xy plane is split into four areas, and those areas are called quadrants. Quadrants. And just so when we're speaking to each other, we know which quadrant is which, this is the standard labeling. So this area is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. Two angles are called coterminal angles if both angles have the same terminal side when they are in standard position. Another way of saying that is that alpha and beta are coterminal if and only if there is an integer k such that the measure of angle b is equal to the measure of angle a plus some integer k times 360 degrees. So here down below, we have two angles that are graphed on the xy plane. So we have this one, it's rotating counterclockwise, and we end up on the negative part of the y-axis. And so this is 270 degrees. And we also have another angle that's depicted here where we're traveling in the clockwise direction and we're traveling like one fourth of the circle. And so remember a full circular rotation is 360 degrees. So if we're traveling one fourth of that or one quarter of that, that would be 90 degrees. But again, because we're going in the clockwise direction, we know that it's a negative angle. And notice they both have it where their terminal side ends up right here. So that's how you can tell if two angles are coterminal visually, but algebraically, let's call one of them alpha and one of them beta. So beta, let's call it negative 90 degrees, and alpha, we can say that one is the 270 degrees. So these are coterminal if we can find a k value, an integer, for k where this equation is true. So let's go ahead and try to solve for k. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 270 from both sides. And these will cancel out. And so on the left side of the equation, I have negative 360 degrees is equal to k times 360 degrees. And if I divide both sides by 360 degrees now, these will divide out and I get k is equal to, hopefully you are able to identify that k is equal to negative one and negative one is an integer. 
So the fact that we were able to find an integer k such that this equation is true, that shows that negative 90 and 270 degrees are in fact coterminal angles.